It's Riley and Kimmy. Kimmy, are we hot? Are we? Uh, Kimmy? <laughs> I know Kimmy's hot. You, not so much, but... Well, you don't think I'm hot? No, you're hot. Well, I'm you're hot. hot. You're hot, I too. I done without the leopard Speedo today. Well, I thought, you know, I wore this just for you today. <laughs> Reminds me, I got to go to the store later and buy a cocktail wiener and two, two withered prunes. Well, I'm proud to welcome George Lowe to the right <laughs> and Kimmy show. he still Joe. gives me a nice introduction. Yes, I am proud to have George. I'm sorry about the withered prunes. Well, that's what a, I meant was like a couple of plump California navel oranges. He's all man girls. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this interview. Um, thank you. Yeah, well, no, no, thank I you. Vote, no, I've owed you one forever. I've, I've been a toad at some of these, and you've been no, nothing but no, nice you, to you me. You were very nice, and you're always busy, and you've been very polite. Yeah, but it's been a real... It's, it's been a real lightning round here this weekend. I'm popular as hell. Where are we? I don't, know where, I don't know where we are. I don't know where we are. Where, where's the next stop for George Lowe? Uh, back in Lakeland, Florida, where I can get a back pill, uh, kiss my mom, and, and go to bed. I'm, I'm out of it. Well... Mommy, I've been looking after Mommy. She's my next-door neighbor. Tell me that ain't a sitcom waiting no, no, to happen. No, you're telling the truth here. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah, my mom and I are, are literally next-door neighbors. I keep waiting for Chuck Lorre to buy that idea and, and hire me. How's that working for you? It's not. It's a horrible idea. Just another predictable sitcom, like like two drunk girls or whatever. And my, does she ask, my, does my she cousin ask, smells of liniment and all the other hits. Does she ask, why have you been out so late, George? No, no, she she's the sharp one. Mom's the one who's like, did you remember to do that recording that you were supposed uh -oh. to do? I'm, oh, crap. No, I forgot. She's an agent. Yeah, no, no, no. She she should be. Ooh. She should be because she's covered me on a lot of. You know, you're not going to sign that until we talk about it. Uh oh. Yeah, she doesn't trust my agent for that matter. You know, <laughs> any agent. Do you still trust your agent? I don't know. <laughs> they had a good. They had a good week this week. We'll we'll see how they do next week. Now, where will George Lowe be appearing next? Where's in your upcoming? You know, I don't have a clue. I got nothing going on for May. So if you guys hey. think of something for me to do in May, I'll be. Uh, not not the 13th, though, because that's Mom's birthday. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have our traditional, you know, Mom likes to get in a cannon at Ringling, and we'll shoot her across the audience, <laughs> and... and then out into the Buick and it's off to the Sizzler. But oh, you're you're a lovely a loving no, son. No, that's our tradition. Really, that's our tradition. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, you're a circus family. I didn't know that. It's true. It's true. I I was the guy that used to have the banjo playing chicken at the carnival until he got too old. We had to eat him. All right, George, appearing at an upcoming circus yeah, or the chicken used to dance on the little hot plate. Yeah. I, got too hot. <laughs> we were doing our tribute to the Nicholas Brothers and it was all over. Oh. Only thing left to do was season him and eat him. Okay. Well, George, I was going to ask you some serious questions here, but serious. I can see that's that's impossible. Serious to, questions. To do. I, it, like it, internal, what, what, uh, like uh, the formula for arterial blood no, gas? No, no, no. PIO1, no, no. PIO2. Why do you know that? I'm a very sick man. No, see, it's like I know the exact speed of light, 186,282.3960 miles per Second. Not doing anything here. See, Feel see. free to join in. <laughs> we, we, Let's we, go over there a second, Yeah, Jimmy. there we go. There you go. Aren't you jealous? I, you know, I'm, I could see you in I'm that kinda, kind of suit. I'm kind of scared of that, actually. I, I like God it. God bless him. Actually, it reminds me, when I look at the guy walking away, it reminds me i got to buy a couple hundred gallons of ricotta cheese later. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, you know, could you see you in that kind of suit here? No. Uh, you couldn't? No. No, 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 no. No? No. No Elvis kind of thing going? Oh, no, no, no. no. Never happened. Never happened. Now, the serious question. I like to keep it simple, Riley. Just oh, the, you're a simple kind of guy. Just, just my reinforced cod piece and, oh. and okay. a clean shirt, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Kimmy. And, and, and Usually so, the lady's hands are quivering by the time I mention the specially reinforced cod piece. Well, the serious question. I have one serious question for you. Are you ready? Okay. You and I both start out at the same, about the same age in radio, very young. Okay. That's true. And you worked for many years doing air shifts and things like that. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you miss the daily air work? <laughs> I knew this would be good. Would it? I had to ask you what you don't get. No, I miss going into radio stations every day. Yeah, do you miss with, that part? With, with a guy from like Squirt, Idaho, telling me why I can't say something on the radio that's looks like blisteringly funny because it might scare the audience and get the ratings through the roof. I was gonna say. You know who you are, Rick. 
You mean you, you don't miss those program directors and operations no, managers? No, no, not a bit. Uh, you know, it killed them in Atlanta because we did great. And then it literally took my poor general manager, rest his soul, passing away to, to get rid of me. Because really? they, knew, they knew if my boss who loved me had stayed alive, I'd have been doing that for, I'd have worked for him forever. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I had one good boss. And then at Cartoon, you know, I always enjoyed working with my friend Keith Crawford, who uh, dubbed me the vice president of lunch. Wow. That was my name there. Yeah. So we. So, no, I don't miss radio. 15 years of morning drive, come on. Oh, come on. 4 a.m. every day. I spent 15 years, the first two words out of my mouth every day were, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do it again. The only thing on the road, police, roadblocks, and drunks. Oh, no, I don't miss that. Okay. Well, I was and I don't worry about radio imaging because we know they're idiots. You'll now, do, a station do you... that's number one for a decade, and you fire the guy. Let him go. You know who you are. I have a feeling you're fun to uh, give a script to. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if you insist on sticking with it, or you could do it right, give me the guidelines, and, you know, well, I'll keep you in that same pattern somewhere. I have an Orson Welles here. That's what I have. Orson Welles. Yeah, Orson uh, Yeah, you kind of got that Orson Welles thing going. My good friend Orson Welles. You know, the funniest thing I ever did on the radio in Atlanta was is? Ruth Warwick in. Okay. Who worked with him in everything. Right. And... and I called on the hotline. She picks up the phone. I'm like, she picks up and I'm like, hello, Ruth. It's Orson calling from heaven. I, I miss you, darling. I wanted to say hello to you. Oh, Orson, you're wonderful. She had been on, what was it, Phoebe on Days of Our Lives oh, for like a thousand years. <laughs> she was one of those great old gals. Nobody could see her in the morning. It was radio. Came in in like this coat that went to Yaya with oh, boy. chinchilla trim and diamonds and, you know. It was great. It was really cool. But she loved Orson and, and her agent every time I talked to him after that for years. You know, Ruth really loved that you went in the other room and did Orson. You did Orson. I don't, I I don't, I, I, I I don't like how that sounds. Imitated Orson. <laughs> imitated Orson. We know Fjord in Norway where Sven Dunderson brings in the freshest Icelandic haddock every morning. For the fresh catch of the day. Then it's lightly crisp crumb coated and served fresh to... That's about as close as I'll ever get to Orson Welles. look him up on, on the air getting getting mad at people. He was in a big session. You ever heard it? The bud was the uh, bird's eye burgers. burgers. Beef burgers. Here okay. under protest, beef burgers. And they were trying to direct him. And he, I've, Come on, fellas, you're losing your minds. I've never directed any actor in Shakespeare the way you fellas are talking to me. See, that's why I asked if you were like Orson Welles. I love him. I love him. Okay, okay. Even, I, even the old, the, the old kind of drunky drunk years, which were, for me, sad. He did a Paul Masson where he, he was drunk as a skunk. Oh, that's on the internet, too. And his, and his bird's eye one, too. Uh, yeah. he is, you know who does a great drunk horse? It is John DiMaggio. Oh, really? And one time it was me, Billy West, poor Phil oh, no. Lamar. Poor Phil Lamar, who was on the phone trying to talk to his wife. Me doing older Orson like that. DiMaggio doing drunk Orson. Billy doing Fjord Orson. We know Fjord in Norway where Sven Dunderson brings in the freshest Icelandic hand. Had a, you know, that's a tough one to say. Woo. But Phil's on the phone like trying to talk to his wife and we're all doing Orson. DiMaggio's doing drunk Orson, which is like, ah, a respectable table wine from Parmesan. <laughs> I'm doing mine, which of course is ours. I can see them coming over the hill in Gower's Corners now, the large metallic device shooting some sort of array, which can't be identified, but seems quite destructive indeed. And, and Billy behind him going, we know a fjord in Norway where Sven Dunders. Yeah, that, and Phil was losing his mind. I'm trying to talk to my wife, you guys. That's insane. Yeah. I love it, though. I thought he was going to kill us like he died in Pulp Fiction. You know, just <laughs> blow DiMaggio's head off, go for me. I just shot Marvin in the car. Now, one last question. Because I know you told me I only had like two and minutes. Really, with hasn't it gone long enough already? Oh, just one last one. I'm just curious. When you, when you were really young... Did you listen to the other voiceover guys like Paul Freese? Paul Freese and well, stuff? In the panel, we were talking a minute ago about, you know, how I was such a huge fan of even Johnny Olson. Oh. To this day, on, on um, let's, not, not let's make Price is Right. Right. They're all still trying to do Johnny Olson. Well, George Gray does a great, you know, George Gray. Right. And 
they let him be him more. But in the old days, Rod Roddy, they always oh, had him. I'm shot, so I don't know if I could even do it, but it was always, it's a new car. Yeah. Well, they always wanted Johnny. Johnny was always way up here, much higher from Plort. It's Plort Enema Cream. Try some today. Back to you, Bob. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, yes. And then now you've got George who's allowed to do his thing more than they would have in the old days. But Pardo, Jeopardy, oh. I grew up with that. I grew up with Gary Owens from our studios in beautiful downtown Burbank. Yes. It's Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Oh. Loved all of those guys. I had a so, feeling. Worshipped all those old time. And then, you know, get into guys like Bill Scott, Bullwinkle, you know, Paul yes. Freeze. Yes. Yeah, we, we could be here all night. Okay, we, we won't, maybe we'll save that for some other time. At some other time, we, yes. You'll come back to the Riley and Kimmy show some other time? Oh, uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Especially if Kimmy wears those pants, you know what I'm saying? We'll have to, you know. Oh, my gosh, Kimmy. We, we have a picture of Kimmy's pants on our Facebook page just to, Well, you, you know, should. Yeah. To yeah. entice people to, yeah. to listen to the program. Yeah, yes. You know, frankly, my friend, you know, if it were down to you, you're not exactly what hey, I call hey, hey. sex in a basket, you know. <laughs> and we're debuting the... George Lowe jingle for the Riley and Kibbe yeah. show. Yeah. 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 It's coming up. Yeah. Th th they're simply awful. <laughs> it's great. We love it. George Riley and Kimmy. Riley and Kimmy will be right back. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.